Hi, Dr. Richard J. Sands here. In this video, I'm going to walk through the Tuckman five-stage model for team development. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. When everybody contributes, everybody wins. However, how do you get to that performing stage where you do have teamwork firing all cylinders? Before I go into the details of each stage of the Tuckman team development model, I'm going to give you an overview. Perhaps the best known and most widely used model for how groups develop into a team is that developed by psychologist Bruce Tuckman, the Tuckman Team Development Model. In 1965, psychologist Bruce Tuckman described how teams move through stages known as forming, storming, norming, performing, and then later added adjourning. Tuckman worked with Ann Jensen in the 1970s to further refine to add the last stage of the model. Remember, teams can slip back a stage, too. Use Tuckman's model to continuously review where your team is at and make any necessary changes to get back on course. In this video, I'm going to explain how Tuckman model works. Before we get started, Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. All right, let's get into the details of how this model works. Tuckman's model is a hugely influential model and by all accounts, my favorite model of team development. Tuckman said that the success of the model was almost certainly due to the fact that they choose rhyming words for the different stages of the model which made it easy for people to remember. Based on my personal 30 years in business, I definitely believe there is something in that statement. I would also say that Tuckman model is almost a perfect model and that it strikes ideal balance between simplicity and sophistication. It is simple enough that we can easily understand it and memorize it. There aren't huge numbers of stages and components that make it complex to understand. But on the other hand, there is enough in it that it carries a sort of sophistication and subtlety that we need to explain a broad range of experiences and to accurately predict what will happen in many cases. Building a model and getting that balance between simplicity and sophistication is hard, but Tuckman has hit the nail right on the head. Let's now have a look at Tuckman's model, which some people call the warming model, and you'll know why when you hear the names of the stages. Names of the five stages, forming, storming, norming, performing, and lastly, adjourning. So let's dive into the first stage of the model, the forming stage. In this stage, most team members are positive and polite. Some are anxious as they haven't fully understood what work the team will do. Others are simply excited about the task at hand. As the leader, you play a dominant role at this stage because team members' roles and responsibilities aren't clear. This stage can last for some time as people start to work together and make an effort to get to know their new colleagues. The storming stage. Next, the team moves into the storming stage where people start to push against the boundaries established in the forming stage. This is a stage where many teams will fail. Storming often starts when there is a conflict between team members' natural working styles. People may work in different ways for all sorts of reasons, but if differing working styles cause unforeseen problems, team members may become frustrated. Storming can also happen in other situations. For example, team members may challenge your authority or jockey for position as their roles are clarified. Or, if you haven't clearly defined how the team will work, people may feel overwhelmed by their workload or uncomfortable with the approach you're using. Some may question the worth of the team's goal and they may resist taking on tasks. Team members who stick with the task at hand 
may experience stress, particularly as they don't have the support of established processes or strong relationships with their colleagues. The norming stage. Gradually, the team moves into the norming stage. This is when people start to resolve their differences, appreciate colleagues' strengths, and respect your authority as a leader. Now that your team members know one another better, they may socialize together, and they're able to ask one another to help and provide constructive feedback. People develop a stronger commitment to the team goal, and you start to see good progress towards it. There is often a prolonged overlap between storming and norming, because as new tasks come up, the team may lapse back into behavior from the storming stage. Performing. The team reaches the performing stage when hard work leads without friction to the achievement of the team's goals. The structures and processes that you have set up support this well. As leader, you can delegate much of your work and you can concentrate on developing team members. It feels easy to be part of the team at this stage, and people joining or leaving won't disrupt its performance. And the last stage of the Tuckman model, a journey. Many teams will reach this stage eventually. For example, project teams exist for only a fixed period, and even permanent teams may be disbanded through the organizational restructuring. Team members who like routine or may have developed close working relationships with colleagues may find this stage difficult, particularly if their future now looks uncertain. My personal experience using the Tuckman model. I have worked with many teams over my past 30 years in management, and I can attest Tuckman's model holds true in almost all cases. It also holds true as a professor teaching classes where students all start a class at the same time, come together for course assignments, and then adjourn when class is over. When new people join the team, when the team has different work to do, it changes enough that the team may no longer be in the performing stage. It may slip back to the norming stage, finding new ways of working with new people in the team or new ways of working together on a new task if it's a big enough change there may be arguments about the new roles that people have on the new task or filling gaps for people who have left those arguments can feel a lot like the storming stage conclusion the Tuckman model is a hugely flexible model and it's one that I believe every manager should know, should understand and be able to call to mind when they are working with a group that needs to develop into a team. I hope I've provided you with an understanding of what the Tuckman model is and how it works. Please comment below with any questions you might have for me about Tuckman's five stage team model. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Dr. Sand saying goodbye for now and thank you for watching.